It's a thought. I mean, you don't have to if you don't want to, but... I mean, we could be doing this show right now, but you're doing this witty banter, apparently. Yeah, apparently. Anyway, so how about if I do this? One, three, and two, and one. It's Sunday, February 23rd, 2020. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. Welcome to Cubs Out Live, the Bear Podcast, Vin Sherman Length, episode number 543. And it's that time of the month again. It happened so soon, but mainly because there's only four weeks in the month. But that usually happens. I don't know. I'm. It's I'm okay. Not, You're sick. It's I'm okay. Sick. You're sick. I'm not like deathly ill or anything. I just have a couple issues. So if I go quiet and, and listeners can't hear me, it's because I forgot to unmute myself from while I was trying to do my cough switch. And of course, it's not going to them. So. They won't know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's just go into this. So, I realized after getting a new car, trying to budget things out. And blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. I'm really either gave myself too much stuff to do in WoW, or I'm just really far behind in WoW. Mm-hmm. So basically, my life has been, for the most part this month, work, WoW, little video entertainment, sleep work while the little video and demon sleep so i always like stop wow and for like an hour or so i'll watch something on tv for a while and then go to bed um except for last week was it just this last week no it was two no. weeks ago two weeks ago yeah two weeks ago because yeah. it was the 12th <laughs> Oh, but the afterglow felt like it was last week. Yeah. Uh, so. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> what? I'm not even denying wow. it. Oh. <laughs> really, no. David? No fan? No fan? I am so disappointed in you. I don't know. I took no shame. <laughs> yeah. It's bright and sunny here. I was glowing that there was no shame. So. So you can continue. Well, what I think happened was there was a blowing and then there was a glowing. I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> no, this is all accurate. <laughs> I mean, David, don't you spit. Don't you spit. <laughs> Spitters are quitters. <laughs> oh, no, Hold no, no. up. Hold up. Hold on. We're going to have a conversation about this right here, right now. There are times there is a reason to spit. I'm just going to say it. If it tastes nasty because you got bad diet, girl, spit it out. I I prefer the method of the fastest way to get it out of your mouth is uh, into the gullet and just get a breakthrough. Uh Uh-uh. But that's that's my personal opinion, okay? Anyways. I'm going to have a tummy ache afterwards. Go on. So for the past couple of months, actually not <laughs> this month, but the last like two or three months before this, uh-huh. we had a guest that yeah. kept showing up. This time <laughs> he showed up you know- in my town. 
Um, not what I thought. Oh, my. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if, 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 if uh, nobody knew, uh, uh, our one of our favorite guests, uh, our recent guests, because um, we like they're all our favorites anyways. Uh, Edward Angelina Cook uh, was in Austin. I don't remember exactly what the specifics were, but he was in Austin. And after work, I went over to his hotel room, picked him up. We had some shoeies. We went back to his hotel room. And things happened. <laughs> yada, yada, yada. I had yeah. breakfast and I hopped the next day. <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> I had breakfast in the hotel lobby the next morning. Like, whatever you want to, like, like throw something However in there. However you want to do that. <laughs> no, but because I had to be out be at work the next day and had to wake up at about about uh, four o'clock in the morning i went home and and slept yes. at home so but but you had you had dinner you had dessert mm-hmm. you went to bed oh my god <laughs> i went to bed at my home not so, this hotel Trudeau, room but we did he the, did, stuff, the he hotel did room i don't see what the you big deal is and stay overnight with them there was I mean, a don't DNA get me wrong. It was, extraction. Like, yeah. that's just all there is to it. Yeah, that's, that's the important part, right? So uh, we, we had some fun. It was so, enjoyable. Yeah. It's all Yay. part of a healthy balance I, to prevent prostate cancer, kids. That's what it is. There you go. Sure. Right. So and so Ed Angelina Cook is one of the rare um, <laughs> fans of the oh, show or friends yeah. of the show that has gotten to meet and and meet Jeff. Yeah. Did, has he punched fate. all three? Meet. Yeah. meet? No. Oh, no. Not specifically no. that, but yes. I I mean I have actually not officially met him in person, Oh, okay. So he's think. he's only got two on his punch card. Wait. No, I don't think I've actually met him. And Dave. I definitely have not met him. David's got <laughs> to put his thinking cap on now. Well, I, because it's like, have you ever been, been with him physically in person and actually interacted with him? Yeah, you that's what I mean. That. Like, I don't, I don't recall doing that. But there's a, I thought, oh, maybe we've been at a, at the a same event. Like, maybe we've been at NAB or World Bear or something along those lines. But I don't think so because I don't recall officially meeting him. Okay. Right. Yeah. Anyway. But it is one of the rares. He 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 probably has a more. He probably well, Gary. I, I take it you've know him. <laughs> yes, I know. I've known uh, Ed for a couple of years now. He's actually presented it on workshops at Drench Fur, and he will be doing another one this year. So, and ah. he and Gabe, which there's a tie-in to this episode, that more on that later. Uh, he and Gabe have co-facilitated a couple of workshops at Drench Fur. So. Ah, there you go. Got it. Small world. So, Small. Uh, yeah. Um, hey, I got a question for you guys quickly here. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know about you, but because he's been with here, uh, he's been on a, on he 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 has been in a couple episodes, rec- a lot of recent episodes recently, and he even jumped in on an episode, like for the Santa episode since uh, Damon wasn't here and he's been such a sport and he's such a sweet guy and he's cute and, 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 and he got to meet me. Um, do you think he would be pedestal worthy? Someone's Twitter paid it. <laughs> I am totally fine with Ed being on our pedestal. If that is what we wish to do. I mean, we haven't, think... we haven't, we haven't, Put somebody new on the pedestal in a while, so why not? And he, I've called his qu- qualifications. I've heard it called a lot of things in my time. I don't think like hopping <laughs> on a pedestal is one of them, but <laughs> <laughs> just saying. But okay, well, executive wow. decision. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, congratulations, uh, Edward Angelini Cook for, uh, becoming our new, 
uh, pedestal person. Now you have to find a headshot for arm to so we can add him to the listing. Uh-oh. He does have Facebook, y'all. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm he sure. takes lots of good pictures. I'm he sure. gives good face. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's a fun picture. The very anyway. first profile picture. <laughs> From 2009. That's anyway. fun. Anyway. Um. <laughs> so I'll be taking care of that. Um, Didn't you already? Uh, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Oh, <laughs> focus, focus. Uh, oh, I am focused. I, I, not <laughs> yeah. I think we I not think on the task pretty, at hand. I think we have a pretty good old focus. <laughs> I think we're pretty good. Okay, Joe. Um, uh, on on, okay. on what we have. Yeah. Uh, uh and 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 AKs. Any... Um, uh, Damon, <laughs> what's your February <laughs> Oh my gosh. So we're going to totally distract from, from, from Jeff for a moment so that he can stop blushing. <laughs> Maybe. Not blushing, not laughing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> did I mute? Yeah, I did unmute. <laughs> <laughs> You're unmuted, honey. Right. Anyway, um, so, uh, so first of all, I'll do the the the, the kind of the news first. Um, so work is changing. Um, if you had followed my Facebook, um, I posted um, a couple of weeks ago, actually earlier in February, I believe. Um, so uh, my job, the company overall, has done a lot of changing in the past few years, and. Once again, we have made another massive sweep of, of things that include closings and consolidations and, and um, um, people getting let go and all that other stuff. Um, and it's been mm, difficult. Uh, I still have a job. That's one yay. Um, however... Um, the building that I've worked at for the past 16, 17 years downtown um, is closing, essentially. They're going to be selling the building and are going to consolidate everyone into um, an office that is it's in Springdale, um, Ohio. It is a good, I want to say half an hour plus from home. It is not particularly easy to get to by bus. It oh, is... Yeah. Um, it is an awkward, it's not an awkward location. The, the building is beautiful. I've been there before, but it is not easy for me on my own to get to. Um, so I have some decisions to make um, personally. Um, what the decisions are, I'm not sure yet, but there are things that I'm thinking about. And um, I'm, 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 I'm definitely doing some thinking, a lot of thinking mm-hmm. and, a lot of like trying to figure out what to do. Um, I'm okay now. Um, I'm actually working from home a lot these this past couple of weeks because my boss herself is on vacation in um, Argentina and Chile for until March 5th. So I'm like trying to determine how this like work from home, work in the office balance can work. Um, it's kind of working, but kind of not. It's weird. Um, I'm sure Gary can probably tell you um, some of the, I know for me personally, as I'm kind of new to working from home, I get distracted a lot easier, easily. And I find myself doing other things and um, I don't have the same, um, like format, screen format, so it becomes just a little bit harder to do things. I was fortunately able to figure out how to get my laptop screen and my big screen for that my big monitor to kind of dual monitor things. I have three monitors at work. So trying to figure all of that out, which, you know, it's taking some doing, it's getting done. But um, again, I don't think I can work from home every day. 
that's just never going to happen. I just don't see that happening. But I'll need to figure something else out in regards to that. Um, so more to come. We'll see what happens. I might be looking at other opportunities, but we'll see. So there's that. Um, what was it? I think, yeah, Valentine's Day weekend. Um, I think I was, yeah, I was the only one that was able to make it to uh, North American Bear Weekend. Yay! Um, I had a really good time, personally. There was a lot of um, fun classes that were going on during the day, but I couldn't really, I didn't do a lot of them. Um, I, I did one that um, AJ was running. He did a uh, one on kink and poly relationships, which was um, really kind of cool. And um, I also attended a uh, it was called What Is This and How Do I Use It? Kind of. That was kind of the title of the class, but it was essentially on impact play tools, which, you know, many people who have been fans of the show know I'm a fan of. So I uh, know about flogging and paddling and things like that. And I went not just not as someone seeking knowledge, per se, but more as someone that wanted to attend a class so that it can be so that it can return. If, if that makes sense, you know, I think this stuff is fun and I think this um, is important and interesting. There are a lot of people in the bear community that enjoy these kind of play, but don't really know what and how to do it. And I think these kind of classes are important for them. Uh, not necessarily for me who knows all of it, but it was a lot. It was a lot of fun. The class was taught by a couple, um, a male, female couple. Um, that were pansexual and it was, they were, they were, they were enjoyable and entertaining and, and definitely, um, made the class fun and interesting. They had a lot of shit, like a lot of like fun little toys that they like talking about. And there was one gentleman who was, um, the unofficial, um, demo dolly for the class, <laughs> um, uh, but he was, you know, he's a, he was a, a bigger, more solid, stockier build guy, and um, he had a lot of muscle and a lot of, of, of you know, uh, um, honestly, he had a lot of space to play with in a good way. So, yeah, um, the contest went well. Congratulations to... And um, to Jack um, Sprinkle Bear, who won North American Bear, mm -hmm. to um, Odyssey Onyx, who won North American Cub, and to, and her name literally just left my head. Oh, Devin S. Lee, who won um, Ms. our Mama Bear, North American Mama Bear. So, yeah, um, I got to see the contest. I got to hang out with friends. I got to see people um, like AJ and several other friends of his and mine. Um, like Chester, who was running the photos with Dane and our Dozer. And um, it was it was a good weekend. I had some fun. Um, one of my highlights was um, instead of going to a class, that Jim and I were talking about going. I ended up at lunch talking with um, two friends of AJ's, one who was very much into being flogged and the other one who is his husband who um, has done it before but you know was unsure. So I ended up teaching flogging with a friend of mine, another friend of mine from Cleveland area. And... Um, I really enjoyed that because that's what I love to do. I love showing this thing, these tricks and things and showing people how to do these things. I I have thought about teaching classes at, at NAB, but usually there's always someone that usually does like the flogging and impact play stuff. So I've usually like step back and let them do it. So um, it was a good time. The theme was um, heaven and hell, no angels and demons, excuse me. And <laughs> they had a fun room that they called Purgatory. That was their dark room, dark play space that they, and it was used quite frequently. Yeah. 
Were you hall monitoring or something? No. No, not at all. Okay. I'm just trying to determine would, how, yeah. how 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 you <laughs> are aware of the usage of the room. I was there. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so you were there a bunch throughout the course of the weekend. Well, not a bunch. I was there somebody evenings. So what yeah. you're saying is when you went there, it was very active. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I was just trying to piece that together because I was like, yeah. And, I, yeah. And one of the benefits, I think, or one of the highlights, I think, of this year uh, that was, was great. Um, so as you know, there was a Mama Bear title. Um, there are women attending the event. And for the evenings, they had a second purgatory that was pansexual. So while they had one that was men only, they had another set up for any, everyone that wanted to play, regardless of what have you. Now, the, I mean, I'm, I'm going to assume the men only space could include um, trans men, but the, the other space was essentially built around being pansexual. Anyone and anyone who wanted to partake of that space could partake of that space, hmm. which I thought was really cool. Interesting. Yeah. Um, it was, um, if, and I hope she'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was sponsored by, or at least somewhat um, put together by um, the current um, Ms. World Bear. Mm. So, uh, Nikki. Nikki the Les Bear. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Well, uh, congratulations to Jack. I did not know that he was the title winner. I'm very excited to hear that. Um, he's quite a he, he's got a really great like soul like kind of personality. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, about him. So that's that's very exciting. Yay! Uh... Oh, I was like to. I get lost. Anyways, uh, so uh, busy, busy, busy. That's what my life has turned into. Um, <laughs> uh, was that this month? Was it last month? This month. This month I traveled for work. Uh, so did that for a week. Um, got some really good training out of that. Uh, just, yeah, been doing a whole bunch of things. Um, and Drench First coming up in weeks. Uh, so now I'm staving off a panic attack because, uh, <laughs> you know, things are coming together. Some things still need to get organized to come together. Uh, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, it's just getting some contract stuff squared up and, and some other items. And Drew was in this weekend, so it was good because... Uh, so yesterday, we literally, like, affirmed previous like discussions and decisions about the beer tour and the wine tour but to do that we actually traveled around and went to the places that are going to be on the beer tour and the wine tour so mm -hmm. that's that started at about 10 in the morning and ended at about 9 30 at night oh geez wow well you know because we traveled throughout the county and into another state and back and stopped at uh seven different places mm. and, and drank at seven different places and oh. eight or two of them. Yeah. That's a lot. Somebody who's attending the event was like, why didn't I get invited to come like choose the places? I was like, really? I was like, I made a sarcastic comment. I was like, you haven't answered my messages. So um, <laughs> like you could have come along. You could have been a part of this trip for the day. Uh, but it was a really good time. But ooh, yeah, got home last night. Mm -hmm. Uh, I changed clothes. I lay down on the couch. I have a huge like uh, sectional couch, and Drew sat at one point. I lay down on part of it, and I told him, I said, I don't think I'm gonna make it. Like I don't expect to be. And yeah, that was I got. I <laughs> maybe la maybe I think I lasted an hour because, well, I know I lasted at least an hour because we watched a documentary on Netflix. It was about an hour. That was nice, and then. Like then that whatever the next through. thing was, oh, I chose a comedy show after that, a standout, but I did not make it through that. And he 
decided to go to bed. So I slept on the couch all night long. I woke up this morning and I was like, well, there's that. So <laughs> I, my couch is very comfortable. Some of my friends, like they only sleep on the couch and they come over. So I don't care. Like mm-hmm. it, that was the whole point of buying this big ass sectional was that it could fit mm-hmm. six to seven people. And theoretically, two people could sleep on it on each like portion if they really had to. So mm. it was it was intentional. I wanted a big, huge, like comfy, like kind of thing. So yeah, uh, yeah it's I, very functional that way. So yeah, I um, slept on my own couch last night. And I was perfectly fine with it. Uh, <laughs> woke up this morning. We did a quick brunch, some other stuff, and then unfortunately. And I'm looking right at you, even though you can't see me. A neighbor who I do not know, who lives a couple units down across the street, uh, backed Uh-oh. into Drew's car. <gasps> so he goes to leave today. And he's like, what the fuck? And I had actually walked out with him to say goodbye. And long story short, he uh, rented a car for the weekend because his brand new car is actually having some recall work done. So he decided to like, I'll just take a rental, not expecting that somebody was going to back out of their driveway and then end up hitting the Fuck rental. Him. Right. That sucks. So he was not a happy camper. So that delayed his departure. Called the cops, non emergency number. A couple hours later, <clears throat> they finally show up, uh, filed a report, which they were like, you know, it would be a moment. And Drew was like, yeah, but like it's a rental. And I have to turn in like stuff. I would really like a report officially that happened. So, yeah. So the cops like actually ran the plates on the vehicle that we thought did it. Cause it was sitting right in the driveway. And I walked over, I was like, them paint scrapes on that bumper look like the same color of your car and vice versa. I, I told Drew, I was like, I will go grab the measuring tape if you want to, to see if it's the right height. Like, cause that's how irritated I was about the whole situation. Get it. So, Gary. <laughs> after we called the cops and we come back inside, then they left a note on the windshield. Hmm. Oh, the the neighbors did. Uh huh. Now, to be fair, where the, the where the units of the parked cars are on the little lot on the end of the townhouses is not like their. I don't think their vehicle is the end unit that faces mine across the street. Like they're probably towards the middle of them. So I don't know what the whole story was, but anyways, the cops eventually came, they ran the plates, I guess, and then like kind of figured out who, like, who possibly was the owner of that thing. And then they got it all squared up. Sure, I'm supposed to take care of it now that we know who the person is. But I just felt bad for Drew because it like delayed the trip and all that kind of shit. So, mm-hmm. yeah, no. well, things yeah. happen. But, I mean, it can, it can kind of work out. But, yeah, so uh, today was a bit of a recovery day because we didn't mm-hmm. drink a lot necessarily, but... Well, let's see. At the first place, we each got a flight of beers. Well, technically, he got a flight of beers. I got four beers in my flight, and I also got uh, maple tap water. So where we went, they were actually doing a maple festival day, which is very confusing because in our region, we actually have maple trees that you can tap. And there's a maple festival weekend regionally, and that's in March. So I think Mm. some people were mightily confused by the fact that there was a maple one day festival like a month early ish. But so this <laughs> maple farm had supplied maple. It was used in a whole bunch of like special stuff that was made for the day. Oh my God. So good. And one of the things you could get on a flight is maple tap water uh, as a taste. So it's kind of like a seltzer water that has uh, maple in it. Um, so it's not really sweet, like super sweet or anything, but yeah. So Yeah. So we did that, and then you know we traveled and went to a bunch of wineries, and we tasted wines, and we got all that scheduled and set up, and then we ended at another brewery that had more drinks, and so yeah. <laughs> I'm old, like I don't drink that much, I uh, and do not go out to eat that much like this. So yeah, I'm like, all right, I need to relax. So it was. It's been it's been pretty busy. It sounds fun though. That. So yeah. So if you're going to drink fur, they're Gary approved. Ding. <laughs> you don't you don't need my approval. Like talk to somebody don't else. Don't take my word for it. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So. Where are we? Are we ready oh, to move, on? We ready to move on. I think we're ready to move on. We're gonna go into this. Oh, 
Gary, what's been going on over in the Facebooks? Uh, some people liked us. Ooh. <laughs> I know. We would like to thank the following individuals for liking our page on Facebook. It's Joshua King, Larry Cotton, Phil Lowry, and George Arlington Turner. So thank you very much for those. Also, we got a Facebook comment post on uh, COL 542, Rest in Peace Growler, question mark. Michael Quinnishet LMT, a.k.a. Q, said the following. Mm -hmm. How apropos. My account was suspended last night. I initially thought it was because, just like C-List and Tumblr, on my, of my massage business. So Q actually is a licensed massage therapist. And so sometimes people get shitty because they think like you're busy trying to use your personal account for business promotional purposes and they get real pissy. That's what he's talking mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. He says, turns out a shitload of people also had their accounts temporarily suspended, mostly only uh -huh. for a couple of hours. Mine was reinstated after six hours after what I'm calling Growler Gate. Yeah, I that think that happened to everybody. Supposed to. <laughs> so I know it happened to me. Everybody present who lost their Growler account temporarily, raise your hand. <laughs> so three three bear hosts out of three bear hosts lost their growler account temporarily thank you very much and, as, and, as um, i was chatting with somebody too yeah uh That's oh really yeah i was i had sent, we had sent messages back and forth and all of a sudden i'm like okay reopen the app because i just got a new response from him and it says your account has been suspended <laughs> Oh wow, y'all! And then, and then it says says to find out email. So I created an email, mm -hmm. and of course it bounced. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure, based off of the plethora of people that were suspended, that there was some sort of bug or glitch or something that caused it to 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 go down. Yeah. And they fixed it, and everybody's back. Everything's fine. Everything's fine now. How are you? Well, so I want to talk about this a little bit because uh -oh. that was a little awkward that we just did the show on Sunday last week, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying for uh -huh. the record, you know, that was on Sunday the 16th. We posted it to what the patrons on the 17th and then to the public on the 18th. And then lo and behold, on the 18th. Uh, oops. So um, I'm going to get a little awkward. Uh, so Coley who created the app mm -hmm. actually posted on the 18th. Actually, I think it went down on the 17th. He posted um, in the wee hours of the 18th. Apparently every Growler account is currently suspended, including mine. <laughs> I have no further information. I have contacted the new owners and I'm waiting a response. I wish there was more I could do to help everyone out. I sincerely apologize to all the users for the users for the inconvenience. And, and then he posted, and he posted <laughs> a, a snippet that says, Growler suspended account inquiry. Alert, your account has been suspended. Please contact Growler. Fuck. So, I, as I said, I'm pretty sure it was a glitch. After they found out that it was happening, they fixed it. Took them a few hours, but, you know, things like these don't necessarily happen within seconds. Uh, unless well, they know exactly what happened. So That is true. True. I think it was all a coincidence. Uh, a very unfortunate it coincidence. But a coincidence. Um, it was a very unfortunate coincidence. As someone who was literally like, because Jim said it first. And I'm like, oh, I feel like I was just on there earlier today. And I was. And I looked and nope, I can't get on it either. And that's why I posted to the, to the entourage chat about it. And now finding out, like, everyone was getting, like, oh, it's no big deal. Because everyone, essentially everyone, you know. Right. I mean, in some sense, Ooh. it was a big deal because everyone's account got suspended. Uh, but uh, uh, fortunately, honestly, I think that they, they, were, they did, did do it in what I would consider to be a timely manner. Because I went to bed, I woke up, and everything was fine. So... 
Right. No, and I agree. Like, like mm-hmm. in consideration of like the downtime, it was relatively short. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so someone that uh, I follow, but I leave them nameless, had posted that they and their partner, uh, their fiance, you know, had lost their Growler profiles, and then they put update. Apparently, Growler's new business model is to get rid of all user complaints by getting rid of all users. <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was funny. Um, they did update again and say your wolves are back online. But like the comment thread is really interesting. So I'm like reading, 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 and all these people are like, me too, blah, blah, blah. They're like kind of going on and on. Um, in the midst of this, if I could find it, if it's still listed, this person actually knows Coley. And Coley actually kind of commented. And I was surprised by the interaction and um i'm just gonna leave it like this i'll talk to you two like offline about this later but mm-hmm. coley is not happy about the fact that people still come for him about the app even though he's not the owner anymore right yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well and it's kind of a double-edged sword like it's one of these things that I mentioned it earlier today to, to Drew, I think. We were in the car. It was either today or yesterday. And I said, you know, it's unfortunate because I think a lot of people took ownership of the app, even though they weren't owners, because it came from our own community. And there's some uh, justification, I guess, that we helped build it by, like, supporting it and by using it. And for a period of time prior to sale, you know, uh, paying for memberships or what ads or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I get that to a point, but I'm kind of like, wow, like I kind of feel in a way because, you know, there's a part where it's like, isn't the American dream to be prosperous and to like build something and make it and to, you know, to be able to sustain your life, you know, and if you're blessed, you are really, you know, rewarded by that. And in a way, I think this is kind of what happened. And I'm like, ooh, like people still hold him accountable greatly, Mm -hmm. even though he's not technically, you know. The one in charge and stuff, and so yeah, I but was like, he's the one that sold it, <laughs> right? I, I'm saying that in in I myself, I know. personally, I know. am like, rolling my eyes at that sort of thing. But that's kind of I the know. basic. Uh, that that would probably be somebody's defense against against that is, is well, he was the one that sold it to the stupid me group, and I'm like, well, oh, and so I mean the 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 comment. Th- Red does not go really go well, and in the end, like there's some butt hurt, like, like, and I and I I feel a little torn about it because I see both sides. I can understand his perspective about how like I get piled on and I still get the hate and people still come for me even though I'm not in charge. Like it even happened to me, and yet I'm still blamed. So I can understand him being a little pissy about mm-hmm. that. Like, oh, yeah. you know, I'm not, I'm not responsible yet. Y'all like still want to like crucify me. Yeah. And he's, he, he, that's perfectly fair of him to be upset about that. You know, and then on the mm-hmm. other side, you know, people are like, you know, we're happy for you, you know, that you have been able to do this thing and, you know, and, and move on and, and whatever. So $11.8 million dollars was it? Well, so here's my thing, because if I recall correctly, he's not 100% removed from it. My impression or understanding of back when the sale was announced was that he was going to be retained and still be involved for some time. And part of the deal was that he was not like it wasn't a cash thing. It wasn't like I don't mean cash, but like, you know, it wasn't a, a turnover of just like boom, here is a big, big ass amount of money. You right. walk away. You have nothing to do with it ever again. My understanding was that, like there was going to be presumably a handoff period. It's like kind of like any acquisition. Right. So like, I don't believe that he's no longer involved at all, but I don't know for certain, but I'm just like, Ooh, like this just got ooh, like <laughs> ugly, unfortunately in a weird way, like, you know, and, and uh, being an outside observer and only having, met one of the two parties briefly so i you know we're really a, kind of a bit of a distance acquaintance and seeing and knowing a bunch of people who had known coley i was just kind of like wow like this is awkward like this is not this is not the meme of eating the popcorn you know and right. being like oh shit i can't wait to see how this goes down like because i i saw it and i read it and i was like this is like okay. cringeworthy sort of well i was just yeah. like i 
I, I'm not sure there are going to be contacts of friends anymore. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. be weird. So Coley uh, might be setting himself up to like setting himself away from some of these people in the bear community. Well, to be fair, if all you're doing, all you, if all people are going to do is like piss on you all the time and you're not into mm-hmm. water sports, I could see where you would get yep. real annoyed. Mm-hmm. Yep. Fact. So, <laughs> so, you know, I, I don't know. Like I kind of, I, the whole bits of it, you know, that I feel bad about is that I think some people feel burned, which is weird. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm kind of like, how much did you actually truly invest like, and that's where I think, you know, it, just as a society, we have an odd thing with that. Like, we feel like because we did something, like, we get to take ownership in it. And then I'm always mm-hmm. like, but wait, like, did you really have ownership? Like, are you a shareholder? Are you on the board of directors? Like, did you, are you part of a, a fund? Like, did you actually give money to make the thing happen in some way other than participating in the product? So it's just, I, I don't know, like, I, it gets a little. Yeah. Just because you bought bought the subscription, don't mean you get to put. You're not the editor in chief. So, yeah. That Anyways. being said, I think um, I'm hoping for the new owners that we don't come across this issue again. Because, <laughs> because a whole like I mean we already discussed it last week. Like whole people were like, when when the TOS issue happened, a whole bunch of people were like, that's it, I'm out. Uh, someone I know actually described for me that they had an email chat ping pong thing go back and forth with growler support because the moment the TOS changed and they caught it, they were like, that's it. I want it deleted. And no, I'm not accepting your terms just so I can delete my account through the app. You are going to delete my account. Like, we're not playing this game. Yada, yada. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I don't know. I'm I'm I wish I was a fly on a wall at the me group to be able to understand what the impact was and to see the real numbers and like to what to wonder truly if they are circling around and being like I don't know if anyone's really willing to say oh maybe we done fucked up or not mm-hmm. I don't know mm. so but yeah mm-hmm. so you thank you for the like ironic and yes like odd timing of the show and the <laughs> the who knows what the hell happened to them thing. Yep. Isn't it ironic? Uh moving on. Instagram, we got a new follower growling grooming. So mm-hmm. nice. Mr. Damon. Shout out to him again. Um we got a YouTube comment. Yay. Uh, speaking of growler, um from COL 542, the recipes growler episode. We got a Comment from Bernie Burkface, and he just says, Yay, Cubs in the house. So, yay. Thank you, Bernie. Glad we were <laughs> back after a couple of weeks. <laughs> True. Uh, over on the Twitterverse, we have Max Bear one uh, uh, Yellow D1434-0752. Uh, Mui, M-O-O-I-Y, 12. Uh, and Eddie H. Cook. Huh. No clue who that is. Yeah. I wonder who that is. Mm. Who that bitch be? I mean, I can make guesses, but, you know, you never know. <laughs> I mean, you probably know, you know him religiously. <clears throat> Anyways. <laughs> Gary. Um, so, what has this past month been like when it comes to shows? Uh, this past month when it comes to shows has been very odd uh, <laughs> and untypical for us. So we started off the month with a what's going on for January and then we had a hiatus for a couple weeks. So we did flashbacks of World Class Kisser Part 1 and Part 2 the sequel yeah, where two-parter. Gabe was our guest because he was the self-titled World uh, Class Kisser, World's Best Kisser uh, along those lines, and so it was good to to have that show come back well, and uh, have it. To on. be fair, he gave himself a world back. class kisser, which could be something that could be multiple different people are world class kissers. So it's really just more about how well he kisses. True. 
Unfortunately, Sorry. I have not experienced this world class kissiness, and I really don't want to. And hopefully, he would agree that I, uh, with me, that I am also a world class kisser. But yeah, you know, I haven't kissed a world class, self proclaimed world class kisser to get the verification <laughs> that I'm a world class kisser. So I'm going to say I'm a world class kisser, and people can just judge me from that. So. It kind of sounds like a gauntlet is being thrown, and I will just say this, that I'm if not you are not a world-class kisser, you would learn from a world-class kisser, so there you go. That's how that works. Ah. Uh-huh. Well, you have an experience in and... kissing. True. Which, uh, at true. this point, from all of our experience as being co-hosts, would probably feel a little awkward. <laughs> Anyways, that's beside the point. Moving on. <laughs> we had another show. Hmm. Too. We did? Yeah. Oh, we did. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was already moving on to the show. I forgot. We've kind of uh, already talked about it, but I know. So last week was episode five forty two, rest in peace, growler question mark. Um <laughs> kind of kind of oddly in an unintentional series because we did a a, a rest in peace Tumblr porn. Uh, a while ago, so this was this was like in that concept or that light. So yeah, it's part of our rest in peace series. <laughs> oh God! Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully that's uh, nothing. <laughs> hopefully, you know. Uh, sadly, we haven't come on to the uh, uh, rip bear four one one yet, but. I don't think that's going anywhere, and I'm just going to say that, I, yes, I have a profile. Uh, it's how I stay in touch with some older friends because they're not on other platforms. Um, so I will say this. I think, uh, it, I think it's be around until the owner actually is gone. Fair that's enough. Sit down. I, I have no more comment to make yeah, on that one. We won't get into that. Why don't we go into this? <laughs> I'm actually going to cut it there and see if we do not get a, uh, a, a uh, <laughs> copyright claim on that. Uh, this is our tweets. Uh, just going back to... Actually, this one, I, I it's not one of my uh, like ones, Uh when I was looking through to see what was, I actually liked it and, and retweeted it after while I was looking for stuff. <clears throat> and I don't know you guys, but one of my fa- favorite like uh, uh, porn peoples is uh, muscle bear porn. Uh-huh. And uh, John Thomas, you might know from several, you know, bear films. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, it has apparently done a video with them. Yes. And Liam Angel, one of the muscle bears, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. had uh, posted a preview of it. Yes. Yeah. Good boys get good boys. Oh my god. Good boys get fed. Yep. I actually saw this. Um, over the weekend, um, this like similar either this one or there there have been a couple that have been posted on their Twitters. Um, I mean, and I'll I'll be honest, it's kind of hot. Like, I like mean, it's it, to me, it's hard to not have a muscle bear porn video that's not hot. But that's just me. well. I- I mean, it depends on a couple of things. Like, yeah, there's the visual aesthetic, but like, if the acting is bad, and I mean acting legitimately, you know, uh, camera angles are bad, audio is bad, lighting's bad. It could be bad. Mm-hmm. But, for for but this muscle is, bear but porn. This is, <laughs> well, I'm saying okay. So to clarify, I think you keep using it as like a label as opposed to a category. So that's where I'm. No, I'm first. talking about the, the the actual website, musclebearporn.com. <laughs> right, and see, to me, this like is it, the like first bear I've films. heard. This is the furthest I've ever heard of it as like a production company. I've always thought of it as like a category. Like if I go to Pornhub, I would type in muscle bear or muscle bear porn. 
that's mm-hmm. where I was coming from. So anyways, as a as a broad generalization, I think it could be bad. I don't know this company for anything, but I will say like the trailer, it, it could, you know. Oh, uh, uh, I, I think I watch previously it, watch linked it, some. Yeah. Watching John Thomas get railed, it it's good. Yeah. Just saying. Oh, and I just got some headshots for for a pedestal. Yes, we know we can see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, and also people probably heard my <laughs> um, sound uh, well. as well. So, anyways, sweet. That's the point. So that's my that's my tw- Twitter. Damon. Um, mine is called Thick. It's um, Chubby Pup Thorn at Pup, Chubby Pup Thorn is Dionys- Dionysus the God of Sluts. Um, and it's um, it's an appropriately named picture. So I had to like actually zoom in, like I had to actually find the photo, like and then zoom in. Because he has this big, huge bottle right in front of his junk that says thick. But I was like, well, what is it? And apparently it's high viscosity body wash. And it mm-hmm. smells like old glory. So the scents, the primary scents are tobacco, cedar wood, and amber. Mm-hmm. I totally wasn't paying attention to that at all. Well, <laughs> I was. Well a, portion, a portion of the proceeds benefit U.S. veterans. It's made in the USA. So bravo to that. Uh, if if his if his if his tank smells like what that's labeled <laughs> as, like <laughs> I I am perfectly fine with that. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because he's he's a he's a beautiful man. Um, I've been following him for quite a while because of the the just the tattoo work alone and um. It's just he. I mean, it's a an accurately named photo. Like he's kind of a thick dude, and there's a lot of thickness there. And the fact that there's actually a bottle of thick body wash, as we now know, and the bottle is actually thick. Like in regards to like it's you know it's a like larger wider bottle. Yeah, it's a stouter, um, wider bottle. It's kind of it's a thick. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there you go. Sexy, sexy, tattooed, nip, um, pierced, Followed. thick bear. Yep. He's sexy. Gary. I am so sorry. I am distracted by going through his Twitter feed. <laughs> media that's you're not the beautiful one. oh that Welcome. looks really interesting see i just uh, i'm not an, an only fans person though so yeah. good on him okay. oh my round two hello okay <laughs> i'm just what i'm going backwards through his media his timeline and there's like tons of Okay, I gotta stop. Moving on. Mm-hmm. He, um, he shares a lot. He loves to share. He can he can share all he wants. Uh, <laughs> speaking of share all they want, um, so we have a new pedestal person, and I am quite proud of the fact that we've selected it as our pedestal. I, however, would like to make a nomination for a future time of a gentleman. <laughs> Uh, so my Twitter post is called good morning, Twitter. Uh, it's Jake Tackett from Jake bakes on 30 something digital. Um, Mm -hmm. he's a big old boy. He is so gorgeous. He recently moved from the Philly area to, I want to say, uh, Wisconsin. See Paul. Minnesota, mm-hmm. Minnesota, Minnesota. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I just, <laughs> he's adorable. Yeah. He has a fun personality. Um, 
And yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's. This is a wonderful picture. I'd happily say good morning to that, and good afternoon, and oh, good evening. I was, I was gonna read and good day. I was gonna Hello. read the first, res- uh, <laughs> no, first you are reply not. on the on the Twitter, and then I looked at who it was from, and I didn't. <laughs> Ooh, <no. laughs> now that's me. <laughs> that's some shade right there. If y'all are interested, it, you could you could go to this Twitter account and see what I mean, he's referencing. I would totally read it, but I'm assuming that this person who uh, posted it does not want me to read it right now. Well, technically, you don't have their permission, so there you go. Yeah, I know. See? Uh, yeah. Anyway, wow. So. Wow. 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 What are you just plowing over there? <laughs> Anyways. Anyways, moving on. Yeah. So he's he's adorable. And um Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Well there's what? a gif. What? Uh, oh February 10th. You found it? You found it? You found yeah. it. Oh. You found it. Oh my. Hi. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And yes, 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 yes. <laughs> uh huh. That, that's you. That that's hi. Uh huh. Well, good day to you too. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yummy. Anyway, should we be uh, moving on into the links? Sure. Uh, cause... the links. This this link is me recommending something from somebody else. So this is <laughs> this is like Inception Link. Um, so I'm going to recommend something that was stolen from Chess, uh, and you're welcome. Yeah, it, it is the world's strongest men meets gymnastics featuring Eddie Hall, mm-hmm. and basically a professional gymnast is trying to teach. This big bellied strong man. The goal is to eventually get him to do a backflip. Mm-hmm. And he's wearing a very, very tight pink singlet and leggings. It's a leotard. It is a leotard. There's a pink leotard. And I watched this yesterday, actually, the whole video all the way through, and it is amazing. Um, it's obviously, I believe, like British or English, if, depending on which word you want to use. Um, and um, it's just, it's, it's really kind of fun, like, honestly. Um, um. They're, they're, yeah, and it, it, it's just fun to watch because you've got this. Oh, they said something. He's something stone, like two hundred stone or whatever. He's a very large man and um, solid, stocky, like bear of a guy. And um, you yeah, get the- to watch him. And this is strongman yeah. build. So the it, there's a difference between bodybuilder and strongman. Strongman yeah. is all about the strength training, but mm-hmm. while a bodybuilder is more about um, actual more of appearance and mu- muscular appearance. So so mm-hmm. not, they they worry a lot about body fat and everything while strongman doesn't worry about mm-hmm. that they're worrying just about their bulk and their strength mm-hmm. um <clears throat> although it's kind of funny they they he he talks about his his belly um in this in this ep- in the in the in the in the video and essentially one of the things he kind of mentions <laughs> sorry <laughs> when it came out in that leotard y'all um <laughs> um but he kind of like you hit his stomach, and he he's like there are abs there. It is there is there is yeah. muscle all up on there, um, and it's just it's 
fucking adorable to see. And he's just so, you know, cute and funny and yeah. I mean, he he, he actually does a <laughs> somersault too. Yeah. Uh, 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 I'm a, he could say relatively well. Yeah. I mean, it's not graceful, it's but okay, yeah. it worked. He did, <laughs> he did well. Anyways, side the point. Yeah. Anyways, you're welcome. It's fun. It was a good show. It was a good episode. So, I mean, good good video. Watch it. It's fun. Yes. And there's some links to, actually, I think he has his own YouTube channel, too. Mm. Gary? I'm amused by the fact that, like, the top voted uh, comment on this video is no one in that gym, Olympic gymnasts, Ashley Bears, and Strongman included, were working any harder than Eddie's leotard in this video. Because <laughs> <laughs> they were basically like, ooh, that's strayed. <laughs> Worked hard. Worked very, very mm-hmm. hard. And, he, and as far as I could tell, he was wearing it the entire time. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You got sweaty in it too. Uh all right. So my pick, uh, which is sort of a repeat pick, but uh I'll explain. So uh Netflix Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. I got caught up while I was gone uh for work training. I actually ended up binge watching over multiple nights seasons two and three. Why seasons two and three, Gary? Because I forgot apparently when season two came out last year to watch it. So <laughs> season three came out, I think in January or February, end of January. Um, so I got around to like binging and getting caught up on seasons two and three. So yes. Uh yeah um still love it still quirky kooky uh dark still has every once in a while a cringe thing that i am not a fan of like i'm not a gore person so every once in a while there's a gross thing that happens per Mm -hmm. the genre and i'm like i get that you have to do that but uh, it's not for me but otherwise um fun and one of my favorite things about the series is that there is a trans character oh nice Mm -hmm. uh that has developed in the course of the seasons so in season one i think the character is presumed to be part of the gay community i'll put it that way but isn't out or anything. And and the, and the immediacy of the friends, the circle of friends, just accept this person as they are. But then in season two, if I recall correctly, it kind of like really manifests and turns more. And there's actually a coming out, which is pretty cool. Mm. And then, yeah, it carries on in season three. Uh, they ended up, you know, taking a new name as a part of their identity and stuff. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Um, and it's, it was kind of, uh, to me, well done, like in a, not a big deal way but it also was like slightly realistic because like then there's a name change and then there's some confusion among other characters and they're like wait who what and they're like you haven't been around <laughs> it was kind of like catch up like you know see when you come around like you don't know what's happening <laughs> get in the get with the program right like you know now they go by this name yeah so yeah it was uh so i applaud that you know there's there's gay characters there are uh, are pan characters. Um, I'm not a fan of the fact that sometimes the pan characters really come off as like they will do anything to anybody at any time to get what they want. I'm not a mm. I'm not a big fan of that like personality story arc. Uh, how they kind of pull those shenanigans a little bit because I'm like, mm. Um, mm. I still think Prudence is a bitch, but I like her. Um, <laughs> She's the mean girl. Like if you if you haven't watched the series, there is a mean girl. She's not nice. She's very like forthright, upfront, always out for herself. So mm-hmm. like she's meant to be that. And like I really like her. Like I like watching her, even though I don't like her character. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just it's well done in that case. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Uh I would highly recommend, like, if you're interested remotely in it, um, in seeing it, it's 
you know, it's a dark version of, you know, talking about witches and things. And what's really interesting is then when you get to season three, like, boy, they really like start mixing things up because it's supposed to be about like witches and Satan and like satanic worship. But when you get to season three, now they're like mix it in. They start talking about the old gods. So now we're talking about pagans and other things and like how Satan was an angel from like the God and like uh, like they're really blending a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm like, boy, y'all are mind fucking people on the spirituality shit. Like, <laughs> like, like people who are Christian are probably like, wait, what? Huh? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a, mm. there's a whole bunch of stuff. And um, uh, Michelle Gomez is the actress who plays Lilith. Uh, also, Miss Boardwell. She is amazing. You might recognize her because even though I don't watch Doctor Who, I did find out that a lot of Doctor Who fans like her because she played the master, the the she female was the master. mistress. Yes. So she's she's in this, and I she's apparently her. She's she's loved as a as a as an evil like actor. Like mm. she's not evil, but like she plays a lot of those roles. So anyways. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, yeah, that's like so. It's it's good, you know. So I'm looking forward to seeing seasons two and three. Yeah, there's a season four that's supposed to come out, and that might be the last season, possibly. So, we'll, we'll see. see. That's my pick. Anyways, I guess what, folks? That's the end. Thank God. I need to use the restroom in a second. So, anyways. Uh, so there's plenty of ways to contact us. Pop over to our website, comes out loud.com. Shoot us an email, it comes out loud at gmail.com. Leave us voicemail, sexy or otherwise, at 361 we'll Talk. That's 361 265 8255. You can follow us on the basis of various social media outlets as Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud, the appropriate place of the URL. You can join our Entourage chat where you can find some of the most interesting things. Uh, at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. You can subscribe to our Google Calendar to find out when we plan to do these shows at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. Um, you can also get merchandise such as uh, the uh, Cubs Out Loud sweatshirts. Uh, you can get the same thing and other types of shirts as well just through the same link, believe it or not. Um, and we also have like hats and uh, consent is my foreplay uh shirts and sweatshirts some plenty of accoutrement over there as well as some like mugs and such like that um at zazzle.com slash uh comes out loud and again that's zazzle dot whatever your regional variant of com is um slash comes out loud so you can get it locally uh, also, we appreciate our patrons at patreon.com slash cubs out loud where you can support us a little a buck a month we go by month mm-hmm. we don't go by episodes so sometimes we give you five episodes in a month. Sometimes we give you four, but all for the same price. Mm. Um, you can uh, also uh, uh, read us on Apple Podcasts, subscribe to us on Google Play and Spotify. You can find me anywhere on the Internet. It says box, that box, puppy, box, gub, box, something or other. <laughs> um, I'm Theater Cup 79 on most bear related sites. Or you can find me as pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. If you'd like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online at GareBear73. That's G-A-R-B-E-A-R-7-3. And with that, say goodnight, everybody. Good night, everyone. Have a good one, y'all. Bye.